and welcome to Alpha Book Club. This is the Internet's finest interactive book club for friends and fans of literature and <laughs> wine. I'm Hector Navarro. Ooh. Joining me as always is my <coughs> trepid co-host, Geek Bomb's Maud Garrett. Also joining us this eve is Nerdist producer, Erin Vail. Erin! She will ho hopefully unveil the truth tonight. Oh, because <laughs> <laughs> it's a mystery. <laughs> quite, quite, yes, indeed, quite. And a welcome to our Alpha community. We appreciate how thoughtful and insightful you are in chat, especially with this week's read, Sharp Objects. No, for real though, last week was great. Such a fantastic, a lovely discussion. Lovely Seriously, discussion. Yeah. I, am, I am consistently impressed with the chat. Yep. Uh, we also had a similar uh, case with um, when we were talking about uh, a comic book around Alpha Comic Book Club this week. Mm -hmm. Another great, fantastic. I mean, they're just they're you guys are best the best community. You, best community. You guys yeah. know you're the best. So Geek Bums yes. is pretty good too. Yeah, I'm saying that because half of Geek Bums is in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, and thank you. Oh yeah, any and new. New people. Yeah, in new Alpha people. Chat. Let us know. Shout us out. I will always recognize. Yeah, that's true. Hector. Adam Hector and uh, Terry are like my my dudes. Your buds. Your dudes, yeah. yeah. We actually are in a hangout every week together chatting about Dungeons and Flagons. Planning that's it right. out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Adam's one of the most organized people I know, and Terry even drew the map by hand. Wow. Wow. Anyway, I just want to give a little bit of love to the that's audience. For sure. Like, that's like great. I said, hands down, best out there. Yeah, including Miss Necromancer, who just says "fuck him," and I don't know what it's in context for. Uh, and I don't think I, I think care. it's about Richard, Richard detective. Ah, uh, yes. I know. I liked okay, it. Great. I okay, great. I know. All right. And good I, talks. We'll, we'll, talk, we'll get into talks. it. We'll get into it. We'll right. get into it. We'll get into it. But once again, before we begin, we just want to give a trigger warning, as Sharp Objects does deal with themes such as self harm and death. If you need to dip out, that's totally fine. We're here for you, and thank you in advance for keeping things respectful, as always, in the chat. Thank you. Wow. All right. So previously on. So let's get into it, right? Yep. Camille, yep. Camille, right? Camille? Camille? Camille Preaker. Camille Preaker is a reporter who has returned to her hometown in Missouri to investigate the murders of two girls. She has a fraught relationship. <laughs> That's one to way to put it. To say the least. To say oh. the least, Aaron. Did you write this? I did. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you should have put in parentheses, to say the least. Oh, you should with read her your mother. Wink, wink. Your synopsis. Yeah. That's okay. That, that was just, I just wanted to refresh everyone's memory. That's it's really, the, literally no. the only thing I added that wasn't there last week. <laughs> it's, it's very good. Helpful, yeah. She has a fraught relationship with her mother, to say Patricia the least. Clarkson. Uh, and a sister who died when she was young. Mm. Camille talks to Mary. Amma. Amma? Amma? Amma. Amma? I don't like they that They say, name. so in the show, yeah, it's very it? like Amma. It's very, very southern. It's like very A-Y. Yeah, Amma. Yeah. 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 Amma. Yeah. Amma. Meanwhile, Australians say Amma. Amma. That's fine. Close, close but enough. But he goes that like, Amma, go get a glass Amma. of water. Well, because there's Amma and Emma, different yes. names. Because it's short for Amity. Oh. Amity. Amity? Is it? Amity. 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 Oh, Amity. Oh. That's what I. Oh, oh, Amity. Oh, ho. <laughs> okay. Say it again. Amity. Yeah. Oh. Like the um, faction in the Divergent books. Get the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Steven, calm down, Steven. Stephen. This is Welcome. a safe That's space, great. so you That's take great. that back, Steven. That's true. What's your That's faction? True. Let us know. I think I was Amity. <laughs> Amity Hold are on. the like nice ones. No, no. <laughs> uh, you could be Divergent, or you could be Dauntless. Those are like the Dauntless, brave yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah. Dauntless is like the Gryffindor. No, I don't even know if I am. Maybe I'm um, like Herbology. Erudite mm. or the Smarties. Oh. Uh, Which ones wear like the silver? Who's Kate Winslet? Uh, erudite. Uh, yeah, thank you. I'm definitely Abnegation erudite or like the selfless like Pokemon. ones. That's it the one does. that uh, Erudite is Shailene evolving is. into Eridon. Yes. I choose you for sure. Erudite. I'm Erudite. That's uh, done. If I had to pick one, mine would probably be uh, Absent because I did not read those books. Uh, well, I read them all. So, and cool. I've seen all the movies and they're bad. But they're I fun. did all the interviews for them as well. That's why I got to interview Octavia Spencer because awesome. of she's, that. Yeah. And I, like it. I believe great. she's Amity in the movie. Got it. Oh, so, very cool. I, it's, we don't have to talk about it. No, Next year, 2019 yeah. Divergent series. Let's not We're do that. It. Um, We're doing so it. Bruce, wait, if I had so an so aunt so Emma, I had a, I have an aunt Doris. Very nice. I had a grandma Emma. So Emma. I like the M, 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 and no, not Emma. Emma with an E. Emma. Emma. Like, Emma. Like Rachel Green's baby on Friends at the end of Friends. When you say Emma, Emma, Emma that's how I say Emma. Girls. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Emma. So <laughs> anyway, Camille talks to. Emma, her 13-year-old half-sister who is playing with her dollhouse. Oh my God. Important thing. Yep. Camille continues her investigation, no. collecting suspects, and Camille meets Detective Richard Willis, a.k.a. Tricky Dick. I was, Tricky like, Willis. Rear, I was on rear, Team Dick. Rear. I was on Team Dick. I'm always on Team Dick. Anytime I meet a character named Dick or Richard, I'm like, I like you. Because of Grayson. It, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Of course. Subconscious. Uh -huh. I love it. That's true. Robin. Uh, or Dick Tracy. That, that's true. Richard mm. Tracy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm, are we showing how old you are? Huh? Yeah. 
Dick Tracy. We learned that Camille has cut words into her skin and has a history of cutting. Went to the hospital. Camille interacts with her family. Amma's tantrums. We get more history with Adora, the mom, not Patricia Clarkson, Adora. Mentions of Adora's room and floors, which Camille wasn't allowed to touch. Yes. So this is all back. This is all like just refreshing. So guys, what do you like more, the mystery or the mood slash atmosphere of the book? I'm going to go with mystery. I kind of actually really want to delve into the differences between the television series and the book. Did you watch the show? So I went in deep with this one. Not only was it a quite a fixating read and I mm -hmm. found myself, you know, digging in more and more. Yeah, you talked about it last week. You were like, this is not my element. Yeah. So you, so this was something that you really, yeah. yeah. And mm, I, I even spoke to my therapist about this book. Like wow. I went deep. Wow. Yeah, and I said, there's a couple of themes where I feel like I'm a bit Teflon where it just kind of like slides off me or bounces because it's like I can't absorb it because I don't have enough knowledge or understanding behind it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm mm -hmm. like, this, it's actually really quite fascinating to be a bystander and be like, what? Mm -hmm. You know, The but, psychology of the characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and I think the book got me a lot more than the TV show did. Really? But again, I smashed out the show in about three days. Okay, wow. yeah. And eight episodes, eight they're episodes. like an hour long They're an each. hour long, they're HBO episodes. Great. Um, Great. And I'm really glad I read the book first before mm. watching it because okay. it's interesting because I did the reverse oh, yeah. I watched right. the show when it was on when it was airing and I feel like I preferred the show more than the book because going back to the question I I really got the mood and the vibe and the aesthetic which I think the show expands on it really when I would finish an episode of the show I feel like it would just sit with me mm -hmm. completely and mm -hmm. I couldn't stop thinking about it and I it was like it wasn't like I was happy because it's I mean depressing stuff yes. but it was like I wanted to keep thinking about it I wanted to be in the world and still missed, yeah. as the opposed book to was the book kind of just a quick like I want to know what happens See, I, want to know I found you know I mean? that there were particular moments in the book where I'm like oh that glance is trying yeah. to show that Camille missed it loves it wants it yeah. despises mm -hmm. it and I'm like yes. eh, book does a better job you know and yeah. it's like knowing being armed with that information those instant like little glances and the start of the show if I had no information going into that that is a slow start of a book it, it is a slow mm. the show is definitely a slower burn okay. than the book but yeah. okay. I liked it and I liked getting more into the town like there was the whole episode that was like Calhoun Day which was like yeah. at the, this big party that they throw at Adora's house and everybody mm -hmm. from the town comes and it gets into like the civil war war history of the town and I was really interested I, I liked that expansion Doink. because it's just yeah. like not yeah, my history yeah. no yeah, I mean that true. makes sense yeah. yeah so that for me I'm just like I get it you guys wanted to kill everyone and have guns yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's America <laughs> yeah. summed yeah. up Ma that was very impressive yeah. you summed up all of American history <laughs> we is, wanted to kill everybody uh, have guns <laughs> yeah. and own people and own people religious freedom <laughs> chill but what I really did like about it is that I, I got the that um, the southern southern yes. where is it is southern I couldn't even point to it it on a map. Missouri. Yep. Mm. Which is also where Not Girl Mississippi. Said. Got that mixed yeah. up a couple of times too. Yeah. Um, That's but hearing the accent and hearing. Mm. You yeah. Know, and just that. like the pacing of the, the city life versus the small town and just the differences in class, even in the small town. Like I feel like the show kind of, I mean, I that fascinates me. I'll tell you what I was. Wait, because I have not seen the show yet. Got I have time. So this is going to be kind of a rare case for Hector where I'm like, I did read the book yeah. before the show, whereas Gone Girl, it was the opposite. Watch the movie first Got and it. then we read the, the book. The movie is so good. Great, I'm great really movie. excited for yeah. you because you'll notice moments, especially when, when like Camille has obviously a dark past and she'll mm -hmm. go through these moments where she'll self-reflect mm -hmm. and you're provided with like what she was like as a kid mm -hmm. and like how she kind of like dissects it in the book. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's not, you can't show that. Right, because it's all internal. But you still can show mood. Yeah. And you can still yeah. show, and that's the thing I'm looking forward to because I felt like just going off of the Gone Girl book to movie, that they did a good job of capturing that mood. Uh -huh. Even though there were, there was like internal monologue in, in Gone that Girl. movie. Yeah, in there Gone was Girl, right? like voiceover. Uh, for certain, for yes. certain times. Is that the case in Sharp Objects? Yeah. Interesting. Which I, I, think I, I do ballsy. think that the yeah. book kind of, I mean, book to show, the one thing that does lose is kind of that first person for yeah. sure. of Camille. But it is focused on her. And we do see, I mean, there's elements of it where it's okay. like, kind of the ghosts that she's seeing or things that you're not mm. sure and the hints yeah. that you're seeing that, that I think are okay. supposed to be kind of visualizations of of her point of view yeah. but it doesn't it's not the same as being like I'm doing this right now so I think that also, the, the, the book described a lot of things better I think that in and we mm -hmm. can go full spoiler now but I think mm -hmm. that at the end of the the book I got frustrated by it's like how this was happening and occurring because you yes. needed the mm -hmm. psychological understanding that she was trying mm. to consume the poison to right. use against her 
that I, I thought that scene, that episode of the show was amazing. Mm. I'd be like, it's, it's rad. Oh, I wish I could chime in. I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> okay. uh, um, and the, you guys you want to talk about Aquaman? She, I've seen Aquaman. <laughs> Shit, come on. When she um, <laughs> hooks up with Jonathan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That makes a lot more sense in the book. Yeah. Because mm. in the show, you just like. In the show, they don't I mean, interact as much, I, I feel see, like. Or I in the book, going. because it's, it's longer, so it's more time together. More time. Where in the book, it's like, it seems like not that much time has passed, and it makes sense that they would But it's actually quite a pivotal moment for her. Yes. Awakening. Mm. Yep. Really. Yeah. So can I, because you know what I'm so interested in too is that you mentioned Maud that you brought it up to your therapist. Can I ask if it's okay? What did your What did you What did you talk about? Like, what did she say? She what explained did your therapist say? Um, sort of like the emotional um, side of of cutting and the trauma. That's yeah. Um, because I was just like, you know, sure. I have I have friends that have done it, and I'm like, this is just not my area of expertise. And mm -hmm. she said that it, it is usually something that um, people a little bit younger will will do, but that that actually to be really quite cautious and careful because when people do talk about it, it can actually encourage people that have been thinking about it mm. um, to try it and to do it. And there is Interesting. that it's it's often it can come across glorified mm -hmm. to some people. But yes. for me, like my pain threshold is minimal at <laughs> best. I am surprised I have tattoos on my body. Yeah. Um, I was a bitch getting my ears pierced. <laughs> they're not big me tattoos. I was like, they're small have, tattoos. They're small, they are they're not, small. They're not, they're, you know, they're, I they're, could not. Yeah. yeah. Um, Rachel comes in, she's like, like, I got a new thing, yeah. it's this big. I'm like, damn. No, yeah. Ow, ow, ow. So I'm like, I, I have one tattoo, but everyone yeah. was like, oh, it's not going to hurt that much. It doesn't hurt. It's more yeah. like it's a needle annoying. dragging and I was like, through <laughs> your skin. I looked at my best friend and I literally squeezed her hand the yeah. entire time. And I, and I was like, that hurt. That's not like I'm like, yeah, yeah I'm going to get another one tomorrow. Yeah, it yeah. hurt. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, it was excruciating. <laughs> I think it, it, it's, it's it, a needle it, dragging through your skin. It's <laughs> so interesting what your therapist brought up because I can also understand that. Two, not that I feel that it's ever been glorified for me when I've seen it in movies or televisions or books or whatever. 13 but Reasons I, Why came to mind, yeah. where it is centric and around And I heard that was a problematic show yes. for that reason. a girl who commits yeah. suicide, and it was like, we don't want to depict this as an out, which mm -hmm. is why they mm -hmm. actually made her committing suicide quite gratuitous. They wanted it to look t t agonizing yeah. Yeah. Or when, when Robin Williams passed away, and he died uh, via suicide, that people were posting an image of the genie and they were quoting the end of Aladdin, where it's like, Genie, you're free. Mm. And people were attempting to talk about pain, mm -hmm. but a lot of people were like, that's not a healthy thing to put up there because it seems as if it is, that's like you end. said, a that's, way out. Yeah. yeah. A way out. And we and, and so it's such a and I'm totally on the same page as you, Maud, where I'm like, this is not my area of expertise. I absolutely feel like an outsider looking into mm. the descriptions yeah. of, of this trauma and of this pain. Sometimes I can relate to it and, and thankfully the writing is so good that I understand it. Mm. But I don't, and sometimes I can't relate to it. Yeah. I, at least with with the description, I'm like, this is some serious trauma that this family is going through, that Camille has gone through. And it reminds me of other things here and there that seem so outside the realm of possibility that anything could ever happen like that in my life. Yeah. And Imagine yet, having a people mother. People go through that. Yeah, yeah I that cannot. would only I love you if you were in oh pain. Oh, yeah. God. You know? Yeah. I can't, but there's other things about there, this relationship that I can relate to because yeah. there's other very mom things in this, there, like we talked about. The smothering and the yes. doting and the <laughs> wanting to care, like that, I sure. feel like is kind oh of gosh. relatable in some like, ways. Mom, I really, really, oh my God, I was like a kid. This yeah. is like what got me. I was always tall. I was always so much taller oh. than everyone. You, and I'm sure you were born tall. I'm sure you were a tall baby. <laughs> yeah, it was like, <laughs> <laughs> this long, it's lanky like the, baby. The came sketch of like Will Ferrell, just coming <laughs> out of the Cat Man, this is Cat Man. <laughs> Mom, I'm going to Atlantic City. I need to borrow 100 bucks. Yes. This here is Cat Man. Wow. <laughs> um, but I had all of my friends' mothers tell me, oh, you're going to be a model because you're tall. Mm -hmm. Models are tall. So I had in my head that my purpose was to be a model. Wow. And my mom thought that was a terrible idea. Um, mm -hmm. And she was quite dissuasive about that goal. Really? And I remember that I was like, there is an open um, like call Cast, for, for, for models. Mm -hmm. uh, can you please drive me there? She's like, no, if you want to do this, you'll get there. You'll figure out how to get there. You'll figure out what train. You'll Whoa. figure out what bus. If you want this that bad, I don't want you to do it. But if you do, you'll make it happen. That's kind of awesome. And I was like, but it was like she never approved. Yeah, yeah, that's like not my great. My mom has never really loved what I do because she is not one for the spotlight. And yes. she goes, mm -hmm. I don't care what you do, just never mention me. So I have mentioned my mother every <laughs> fucking episode. My mom's the same way. Yeah. My mom is really the same way. She's kind of like, she gets so embarrassed when when there's been opportunities. Where I'm like, mom, 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 we, I talked about you on the show. Or I did, you know, like, 
mom, would you want to, can I call you and can I ask you about a movie or whatever? And she's like, no, mijo, no, don't, <laughs> oh. don't do that. She says mijo? What's that No, mean? sometimes I, I embellish. Uh, she does, but sometimes she calls me mijo. My mom just calls me by my sister's name. That's what mm. I think, I think the mother of every what? child who, oh. who has two, who has yes. multiple children, before she even, she's like, Victoria, Hector, come and do this thing. Yes. And I'm like, all right. She doesn't bleed yeah. them together because no. I've got my brother Jack and my brother yeah. Jarcy. So <laughs> He'll never be Darcy. <laughs> He'll only ever Jarcy. be Jarcy because it starts <laughs> off being Jarcy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. You, you got some gets, Yeah. I mean, yeah. my sister's name is Shannon. So they're kind of different, but they, Aaron mm. and Shannon are both like, mm. the syllables are the yes. same. Yes. Aaron. And there's an Hyman. <laughs> there's yeah, an yeah, yeah. Sh- Shannon, I mean, Aaron, like, Aaron, and we sound similar. We have similar voices. So we used to try and prank her and be like, do like act like it was Shannon calling, but it was actually me, or vice mm-hmm. versa. So, mm-hmm. yeah, Pranks, Get your classic. Kids. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, yeah. all right. Well, I guess let's keep talking about this book. Anyway, mm. what's it? Like, what's going on in the chat, Mod? You're always keeping your eye on the chat. I, I'm Hawkeye cr- on that. I've been tattoo on that? chat. Okay. Oh, tattoo yeah. chat. Very nice. Um, so here's the other thing. This week's chapters. Now we're into this week's chapters. Yeah. Camille and Richard become intimately involved. Wink, wink. Well, I mean, <laughs> again, I, I hate yeah, yeah, to keep yeah. bringing up the book and the show, but yeah. I feel like the book did a much better job about that relationship sure. where his intentions were kind of prevalent from the start or mm-hmm. it was a better um, twist. Whereas in the in the in the show, it's like you're following along when he finds out. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, it was attracted to her and then he uncovered yeah. And then he became mm. more disgusted. Yes. Whereas I think here he was armed with that information and he needed it and he needed to get close with um, Camille for that. Yeah. But then found that he was falling for him. Yeah. And I wonder if it's because maybe there is um, a lot of attraction involved when someone feels that they can rescue another person. Yeah. And that sets up a dynamic. And usually Damn. it's the man who feels... Um, very kind of like uh, important or special or has yep. a purpose if he can rescue the woman but there are many 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 women that see a man and they're like oh he's mm-hmm. broken and damaged mm-hmm. and if Tony I Stark. can fix him Pepper Potts and Tony mm-hmm. Stark that's my theory but then they actually did really like each other but my theory is that uh, Pepper I don't know why I'm saying this but Pepper Potts was like Tony <laughs> it's, you, it's you relating to it he's something so mm-hmm. it is, it's, it's true thank you mm-hmm. man you got like a, our very own therapist I right know. here like, great. not qualifying What's that? Don't well, my mom's my mom's a yeah psychologist. Yeah, and I yeah, think you, that, and that so was you're a, also like a, a I guess amateur psychologist. But I, I, I no, it's called being a good listener. It absolutely is. <laughs> it's called being empathy. a good friend. Empathy. Ever heard of it? Yes, I have. <laughs> And a thank you for that. And empathy can be really, really hard in a, in a yes. book like this yeah. where, you know, you let feelings in and you feel for people and there's a lot, a lot of feelings I to know. be I had. feel like I, I kind of kept it as, as objective as possible. I was like, okay, well, because we know that this was her life and because we know this was her, then then X happened. Yeah. But it is so much more complex than that. It's yeah. so much more complicated and so much more yeah. like, yeah. yeah, but that's not a thing that people do. Like that, right. these actions are right. not logical. We right. see how they happen, but it's yes. not like... You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. And I felt a lot of that towards the end of the yeah. book, which we'll get into. Great comment in the chat from Creating Claw. Perks of being the only child, talking about the parent saying your <laughs> your sibling's name, until my mom began calling me by her two dogs' names. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. Sorry, Creating Claw, but that's real cute. But that's real that's cute. Very cute. Me as well? What happened? What's going on? That's fine. I can tell, Back down? I can tell Sorry. another name story. My yeah. nonna was Italian, like full, came to nonna. from Italy. Yeah, nonna. And you love looking for Ella Brandy. That okay. book. Yeah. Adam Tell us um, bought it. <laughs> he bought it straight but, away because um, when she would get us birthday cakes when we were younger, uh, they would always be spelled wrong. So it would say Edina instead of Aaron because my mom gave me and my sister the most Irish names possible mm. for my Italian grandmother. So it would say Shanna instead of Shannon. <laughs> Shanna. 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 Edina. 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 Yeah, because yeah. it's Eden. Eden. Yeah. Eden. It's just Edina. Fascinating. The, the air wild. becomes a D in, 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 R, in yeah. Italian or Latin languages sometimes, Spanish yeah. languages. The, the, R, the R becomes a D. Yes. My cousin Alex would always get Alice on his mm-hmm. cakes. So, and we would, we would that's giggle because that's, yeah. Alice. Yeah. That's, that's what hot. rolling your tongues comes from. Yeah. You know, my name is Hector Navarro yeah. in Spanish. And that is the same as making a D sound because mm-hmm. you put your tongue up against the roof of your mouth. Ara. So R's become D's, kind of they blend together. V's are B's. Yeah. Because it's just a b, 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 b noise. Mm-hmm. A yeah, B right. and a B. Yes. Same, similar. The bottom. Romance mm-hmm. languages, am I right? What's that? Because romance languages, am I That's right? That's right. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Irish. <laughs> Italian, <laughs> Irish. Oh, okay, great. Like many, many uh, All right, guys, let's keep moving on. Back to the book. Camille and Adora have tense drinks, and Camille begins to look into suspicions about Marion's death. So Did I think with this yeah. one, well, I think she's starting to realize that... Um, there's finally patterns. And this is what's also great, not great, but this is what was a revelation about childhood trauma, is that 
so much can be stark obvious, like blaringly obvious, mm -hmm. but you just can't see it because you're so close to it. And now that she's removed herself, eight years being out of this, you know, her family home, right. and she's, mm -hmm. you know, quite a an ambitious person. She's obviously still coping, mm -hmm. um, and like I, I still think that that's like a fascinating look into it like mm -hmm. knowing that your skin is on fire and for her it was a particular word and i loved how that was like associated with her journalism mm -hmm. you know like mm -hmm. that she was a reporter trying to find and it's all about sort of words and for her like her skin would be like flaring until she was able to satisfy that that word was taken care of yeah mm -hmm. and that yeah. was that is that is something that i can't relate to but I think I might have a mild case of obsessive compulsive compulsive compuls compulsive disorder mm -hmm. yep. with other things. Uh, my girlfriend tells me this all the time with the way that I organize stuff, the way that I list things, the way that I have to like uh, systematically go through list of things. And yep. sometimes it feels like I have I do sometimes have things that are kind of burning, not quite to that degree at all. But until I sort of are able to are able to deal you know, with to it, deal with it. Yeah. then it's hard to sort oh, of like okay, yeah. Great. yeah so I, I like yeah mine would be my I'm just doing it now my nails mm. I am constant and I I catch myself on the screen doing I'm constantly mm. now it's cuticles but it used to be nails yeah but I'm picking pick at mine mm, and yeah. it's like I can't focus on anything or let it go until everything is smooth. taken care of I make a lot of lists I'm a big list maker yeah. and I I list have to just think to do mainly so to get it out to of get here. it out of my head onto yes. paper don't forget anything it's more manageable but I right have there. to like fully complete the task to cross it off even if I'm like 90% of the way there if there's yeah. a little bit I'm like I can't cross it off I can't I'm, if yeah. I'm waiting for something to happen so I can be done can't do it yeah right so it's if fine. you have to go to like the DMV <laughs> but it's not open yeah. for three days yeah that's on that's on the list or if I'm at the DMV waiting can't cross it off because I haven't gone to do yeah. the thing yeah. or whatever yeah, yeah yeah do you write the list or is it on your phone uh, usually write, but sometimes phone if I don't have like paper. Because I need to be better about it because I feel that my brain is an omelette yeah. and it's everything goes in and yeah. then it scrambles. Mm -hmm. And so it's instead of having like seven different things, it's all one big yeah. mess. And that's why I need to be better about it. Because I'll be in the middle of a conversation and be like, <gasps> I'm supposed to do this thing. I've just remembered. Yeah. yeah. I used to be in high school, I'd write stuff on my hand to remember. Right. And yeah. that was also brought up back mm -hmm. in the show, yeah. which I thought was. Um, clever. Yep. Mm. Speaking mm. of the show, great observation in this fun little thing that uh, we talked about is that ever since Rachel last week mentioned Chris Messina, it seems like his name's popping up everywhere because yeah. he was just cast, even though he's in Sharp Objects, he was just cast as the villain Victor Zaz in, is it in Birds, it's in of, Birds Prey? of Prey? It's in the Birds, Birds of Prey movie. Birds of Prey, oh, cool. colon, yeah. the, the emancipation, emancipation of one fantabulous Harley Quinn, the worst title in ever. human history. It's fantastic. It's not as bad as Borat. Fantabulous, I just... I, I There's a Bratz doll it. called. It's not the word, isn't it? It's fine. It's not be, double not It's a not going to be a real. Yeah, but Harley Quinn's not a real person. Uh, it makes but me mad. this is an interesting thing. God, do you want to talk about screwed Vic, up? What Victor Zaz? Yeah. Yes, yes cool. Victor Zaz is a serial killer who cuts a mark on his body for every kill, and he has those like. So does Killmonger. Yeah. Yes, but Killmonger has the dots, yeah. which comes from like an African tribal tradition sort of a thing. Victor's yeah. Zaz is similar, but Victor's Zaz just literally does like the four checks and the five right. cross oh, thing. So he has like, a t what are that? what is that called? Tally marks? A, a tally mark, yeah, I guess tally. like a tally group of, yeah. grouping of five, which we yeah. all know is one, two, three, four, five. And then line. He has all of those around his body because he's oh. killed like. That reminds me of the Doctor Who episode about the, I think it's the silence where, oh, yeah. isn't that the mm. most amazing um, alien? When you mm. see it, you remember it. as soon as you look away, you forget any every anything associated That's with cool. it. So when they see it, they would mark their body, and so they'd look down, and all of a sudden, there's like 25 tally marks on their bodies, and they're like, "What?" <laughs> yeah, That's it's awesome. great. What Crazy. doctor was that? Matt Smith. Cool. Yeah, I'm gonna jump. And that's in where the song Whitaker. came in too. Is that season done yet? What, what? Is the new Doctor Who season done yet? With One more. Jodie Wh is it Jodie Whittaker. Yeah, yeah it's Jodie. Yeah, New Year's it's special left. Okay, so just the New Year's special. All right, cool. I gotta jump in on that one, and then maybe I'll backtrack and do Matt Smith. Okay, great. <laughs> is that your favorite doctor? Okay, great. All right, it sounds is. good. Yeah. Sounds it's good. It's my favorite Prince Philip on yeah. the crown. <laughs> my um, favorite uh, purple man? He just purple. No, Matt Smith was not purple. My man. favorite that soon to be. Oh, that's, that's still a doctor. <laughs> still a yeah, doctor. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. Okay. Anyway, good. Good he's a tenth doctor. So let's keep talking about this book, yeah. guys. Uh, Camille it's struggles with getting the story. What were you going to say? Gonna say it's hard. It is. S such a like an intense uh, yeah we keep, topic, we, we and keep we're moving all like, away from it <laughs> let's joke about stuff yeah we keep moving away from it maybe as a coping hard. mechanism yep definitely as um, a coping mechanism yeah absolutely so Camille struggles with getting the story she Don't continues blame. to have an affair with Richard we get more time with oh I'm sorry Amma and her friend you want some oh, I'm sorry I get that I got you 
We get more time with Ama and her friends. God, Ama's the worst. They're brats, aren't they? Party, oh so this is this is nuts. And then Camille this is the part that I can relate to. Sure. Bratty, mean girl, queens yeah. of the school. Mm. See, and I can't and it's something I can't relate to, yeah. but I know that it is real. I, no, it, I, I never it, questioned yes. a single thing that had to deal with Ama. I was like, like all of this girl? is real. Yes. Yeah. And that. Oh my God! The yeah. the tiered system, mm -hmm. the tech tactics and techniques of have, belittling have, other people. Have we talked about this before? The difference between boys and girls when they're younger. I heard a long time ago that the difference is is that boys are allowed to physically hit each other, or fi or be sort of you know boys will be boys run around and, and kind of you know but but girls from a very young age are sort of taught to it's repress. All it's all mental. It's all mental. They're taught to games. that's not ladylike. A so woman's so, weapon is her words. Yes, yep. er, and why is that? It's because and of this exclusion. thing that I heard is that Unless girls you are, are still push a girl down the stairs if she's being a Jeez, <laughs> did that did that happen, Ma? Did you do that? She had me up in a chokehold against the oh my door. God. And you yeah. pushed her down the stairs? Yeah. Oh, wow. Did she get hurt? Well, she said she did. Were you hurt? No, she was fine. Were you hurt? You guys were fine? It was just like roughing around. See, but that's the thing. Young boys are allowed to do that shit, but, if, but girls are uh, encouraged. Well, and I imagine it's the same in sports. Australia. Maybe, uh, I know this, I'm speaking from an American's mm -hmm. perspective, like in the United States, is to not be that way. Or what did you mm -hmm. say about sports? Well, I mean, like, I feel like yeah. n now, more recently, like I played sports in high school. That's and good. I'll, I'll make, all my friends played sports. I feel like that was our but like our, outlet. But to our be, parents' generation. But our parents' generation, and yeah. even in those sports teams, there were like cliques and people yeah. excluding yes. people, and it was yes. still that element yes. of cattiness. But it was just yeah. like, oh, and we're gonna go for the ball and knock each other over, and then yeah. be done with it, you know. And then, and then you and then you'll be fine. But yeah, and then so. it'd still be like we're having a party this weekend, <laughs> but like don't tell this person because she's weird. <laughs> the Aaron. And, and again, in I the, wouldn't do that. <laughs> I was usually the one that wasn't invited. Yeah. It, but that excludes like, and I'm, it's so much harder now as well. I'm so worried about sort of this generation where it's like when you leave school you're mm -hmm. you're not leaving it behind in my generation it was mm. msn messenger yeah or like your aol yep. yeah yeah mm -hmm. um but here it's like social media on your on mobile phones you're it's like still you you're can't still escape it yeah and i i tell a lot true. of people in high school that it's like for me the first day of my life was the last day of school like that's when i really believe that my life began but um, but do you think that there's an element of uh, being more mindful of everything that we're talking about today. I mean, one of the no. greatest movies of all time, Mean Girls, yeah. came out 13 years ago in 2005. It's still, and that, still and relevant, yeah. though. It's still relevant, but it, but the thing is, is like the lessons learned from that movie is like is like let girls play sports, understand why the their words have become their power, and try to dismantle some of those social constructs and kind of just Good be more aware luck. of that. Good luck. Yeah. Oh, I really? I got a long way to go. We oh, had a school society. uniform. Yeah. And it was like a school uniform every single day, but three or four times a year we would be able to wear whatever we wanted. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't go to school. I wouldn't go to school because it was just a judge fest. People would analyze what you were wearing, mm -hmm. if it was brand named, how expensive mm -hmm. it was, if it was on trend, and they would use it to ridicule you if you weren't at a particular par. Jesus. And my parents <laughs> would be like, we're not gonna fork out $120 yeah, for you to wear this t-shirt that is on trend. And I was just like, can't do it then. Yeah, like this is absolutely so. So you would be suicide. like, mean, you'd yeah. be like Mean Girls. I'm sick. <laughs> yeah, and not yeah. go to school. Hundred yeah. percent. Jeez. Well, it's like so yeah. in sixth grade. Shout I out to everyone who said they like my boots, though. They're great. <laughs> no, <laughs> I um, I feel like this is actually something that I feel like find is interesting. I feel like everyone in their lifetime hopefully has this epiphany mm -hmm. where they realize that it doesn't matter. Yes. And mine, thank God, happened when I was uh, 19 turning 20. Great. Um, in high school, I never thought I was good enough. I had crippling fears about, you know, putting myself out there and getting rejected, uh, whether it was with a career or whether it was with a guy or whatever it was. Um, I had any kind of confidence beaten out of me. Um, and I, like I would hyperventilate trying to get ready for a party and what I would wear. Like that was so important. And then when I was 19, I was offered a job hosting Nickelodeon in Australia. Yay. And I swear to God, it just fell off me. And right. I was like, oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what people think of me. And like having that as an overall, it doesn't matter what anyone thinks of me, was such a life epiphany. And I felt like that was the day that I became an adult and I became the, the version of me I was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. But that takes a long time for other people because they Absolutely. don't have mm -hmm. that opportunity. And to sometimes that, like, it comes in waves. You have yeah. this, this epiphany. Erin, did you have anything similar to that? Do you remember, uh, like, were you, did you feel, did you feel different in high school slash middle school? Middle school I was mean, the worst. Yeah, high school, school was way was cooler. So middle school was awful. It's funny because I, I don't, I mean, I don't, 
I guess I'm a confident person and that I'm like fine with myself and I'm like this so I am like don't, whatever don't air quote it's yourself whatever. you're a confident person don't do <laughs> but, that but it's never felt confident so I just felt like yeah this is who I am like I'm yeah. gonna do my thing like whatever but like in sixth grade I had braces and mm. uh, that was when Keira Knightley got her hair cut super short and she had this like, really oh, cool haircut yeah. and it was like long in the front kind of short in the back and I was what like was this Pirates 1 what was, it was this it was after Pirates 1 wow. it must have been after Pirates it. 1 I remember the cover uh, exactly and I was like holy shit that's so cool I want that haircut so I brought it to the hair place or whatever mm-hmm. got my haircut super short it looked horrible because obviously I don't look like Keira Knightley <laughs> like I mean I know it's very close but I don't <laughs> look like Keira Knightley uh-huh. I had braces I was 12 so I was mm-hmm. just like chubby cheeks whatever um and it was horrible and I like I, it's like I was also super into like 50s and like Greece and I, I was really into that style so I like wore pencil skirts to school and sweaters and cool. like polka dot stuff and I that was what I was like really into but then um, that's when all my friends started to like have boyfriends and it was the first kind of rumblings of like oh my god I'm gonna kiss like this person and blah blah mm. blah and I was like nobody likes me why does nobody like me like so sad about it and I was like well I guess I have to start like dressing like everybody else mm. to like conforming. hang out with the cool did you? any yeah. school point to any school there yep. is a level yeah. of conforming yep. like, and that I'm you like that was probably undertake. the coolest yep. that I was when I looked terrible I, I can think but of I had one cool style moment in high school middle school it was middle school seventh or eighth grade where I had a moment where I was like I'm attempting to conform and it yeah. worked and then I was like I don't like this, this it didn't feel good on me but I was I was really lucky in that I had um I I, I didn't have my first kiss until 16 who then with was with who then became my first girlfriend but up until that point when you're a 15 year old boy and you're in high school you feel like it's not going to happen for me in high school. I was already planning like, okay, it's going to happen for me in college. Mm -hmm. I'll have a girlfriend and a first kiss and stuff in college. And I remember having feelings in middle school, high school of like being empathetic enough to understand adult Hector and go, adult Hector thinks I'm being ridiculous. All of my concerns right now. I know that adult Hector is like, dude, it's going to be cool. I could feel him in the future going, it's fine. Just get through it. This isn't as important. Yeah. I have that sort of perspective. Maybe because I was watching movies and TV shows. And, you know, so I felt like I had a little bit more of a, a broader perspective, maybe. But I remember having those feelings of like, oh, it's it, it's silly for me to feel this way now. I know that it'll be chill later. No, I didn't have that. Yeah. No, yeah. I did not have that. I, this was my world. It was yeah. so consuming. Until Nickelodeon totally. hit you up. Yeah. Well, they, yeah, that was someone great. saying, you're actually good enough. No yeah. one said I was good enough at any other time. Todd, yeah. Yeah. Totally you're good you enough. are good enough. You're wonderful. You're well, exemplary. But it's, it, it's interesting to... I mean, people could scream it at your face, and you're like, "That's you're very like, true." Get, yeah, that's I, very true. <laughs> when I was in college, the like, like I went to school in DC, and everybody's very into interning, and it's very high stress oh. and competitive, blah blah. Which, in like, like Washington DC, yeah, which, Jesus. Like, I, I mean, it's that's where everyone's in politics, blah blah. blah. I was not uh, into politics, but there. I I wanted to do journalism or TV or whatever, and mm-hmm. I got an internship my sophomore year at ESPN at around the horn because their offices are in DC. Okay, and I that's the, it's the same thing where I was like. I got the email got and it. they sent me like a little video saying yep. that I got it and I watched it and I was like, this is fake. Like this isn't yeah. for me. Like this is for, this was a mistake. Uh-huh. And I feel like it had to like sink in and I was like, wow, they want me. Like yeah. this is yeah. cool. Yep. Yeah. You know? But it's just like, yeah, you don't, it's the same thing where you're like, yeah, you can be told like, you're so good, you're so smart, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, and you're like, no, no, I'm not. Until That's, someone like that you look up to or admire yes. or that has like some sort of established, you know, you superiority. You have to like yourself. Accept it. Yes. Yeah. Like I wore skirts and shorts and everything. Like no one saw above my knees until mm-hmm. I got a Saturday detention in my high school, and like the coolest girl the year above who had a lot of sex was like, <laughs> "You've got great legs. Why don't you show them off? If I had your legs, I would never wear anything long. I would wear short shorts and skirts." And the next day, I cut everything. <laughs> yeah. This is the power of girl to girl compliments. Oh my god! Influence. Really? Yeah. Yeah. But you've also got Emma, and it's interesting hearing every single person in the town um, weighing in mm-hmm. on what trouble and how dangerous she is. Yeah. And she's, she's thirteen. 13. Yep. It's insane. And you do have to keep reminding yourself. And Camille's just like, she's so young, she's so young. Yes. Oh, wait. Yeah. My first time was with five people. Yes. Yep. And she was the same yep. age. Yep. That's absolutely true. So we learn. And it goes back to the thing, kind of, oh. I mean, all the way back to like Salem Witch Trials, where it's like groups of girls are dangerous. Groups of girls have immense yes. power. But that's and true, dangerous. though. They become a coven. That yeah. is true, though. Yeah. And I, I remember someone asking me, it's like, why, why are you so scared of a woman? Or maybe it's in the book. I can't even, I'm not blurring it now, but mm-hmm. it's like, how, is, how does one girl, it was, it was about this girl who was trying to ruin my life a little bit. How does she have this so power. much power? Like she's, yeah. oh, she's nasty, she's horrible, no one likes her, but everyone still fears her, yeah. why? And I go, because she has the power 
to destroy others through rumor, through reputation. She tried to slander someone to me and mm -hmm. she blatantly told a lie that I knew was a lie. And I was like, what are you doing? That's not true at all. And she's like, well, screw them anyway. And it's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah. And no one would but stand she, up to she, her and they'd yeah. rather keep faith yes. and keep building mm -hmm. up this sort of ego. She is a queen bee and it's just nasty, but she ego. is the most miserable person I have ever met in my life. Wow and can never be happy or satisfied. Yeah, that is Kind of like Emma. Yeah, well, absolutely. She I experiences get it. any kind of jealousy. She doesn't get the center of attention. She doesn't mm -hmm. get like adored, yeah. oh, which is God. so funny Adora. that her mom's name's Adora. Mm -hmm. But she has to literally kill someone. The who most is. extreme response yep. to that. You like, you like her more. Yeah. You like Lily, what was the girl's name at the end, Lily? Lily. See, you I like feel like Lily that was more. dusted over in the show. Oh, the show, mm. I do think that they the reveal in, like, the way... It was the, really anticlimactic. Really? Okay. It's like, here it went back on how it happened and yes. then the friends' exactly involvement. And the build-up of, like, she became obsessed with female killers and stuff. Yeah. You don't really yeah. get in the show. It's like, yeah. it's, like, all the stuff with the mom and then, like, five minutes on. Oh, by the way, there's two girls. Boop, boop. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. don't tell mom. Oh, okay. Don't, yeah, don't tell mama. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> And, and in the book, it was and like, and you don't even really, and, and and there's like a post, the the end of the show is the post credits, it's a post credit scene oh. or mid credit scene, I guess, and it's like a montage of Emma killing them. Oh, I didn't even get to that. I saw oh. the credits roll. I was like, oh, yeah, really yeah, yeah no, I, I had to go back to. <laughs> I, I was always stay for the credits of everything. <laughs> yeah. If there's anything Marvel movies have taught me, <laughs> look what Marvel's done now. Yeah, credits. Yeah, credits yeah, I have to look at every single person who worked on this. Yeah, man. I appreciate their names. I'm like, good, good, good for you. We're we're asking you guys in the poll right now. Did you expect Adora and and Emma as mm. the killers. And I do I think not. that was great because it's like you had no idea. You maybe thought it was yes. Jonathan. You started getting a little bit funky about Adora, realized that she did partake, thought that it involved every girl, mm -hmm. didn't. It was like there was yeah. quite a cool um, few people. A pivots. lot of back and forths. Here's the yeah. moment where I, Sorry. and I want to talk about this, here's the moment where I was pretty much set on it being Adora. First of all, we're halfway through the book last week, and we're really only spending time with her as a character. And 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 um, Camille is meeting some of the other townspeople. But I, I I feel like it's a classic episode of Scooby Doo where I'm like, who do we spend the most time with? It's not in the gang. <laughs> yeah. They're the one who did yeah. it. At the end. What percentage of yeah. your life mm -hmm. knowledge? Yes. Mm -hmm. Comes and from Scooby Doo. Understanding and re yeah yeah understanding of the world and relationships comes from. Media, pop culture, entertainment, movies, television, uh, comic books. Oh, uh, like eighty to ninety percent, yeah. easily. Mm -hmm. Easily. So I know all, about this scenario yes. because this happened and, to Mary and Jane. And real Watson. life, that ten percent is just reinforcing what I've already learned from <laughs> right. other exactly. stuff. Like yep. it sounds silly, How but like. How much was it from your parents? Um, very little, and I adore them, and they're great people. But like I say this all the time, and even I think my mom agrees. Like I was raised on comic books and yep. TV. Like American television is a powerful drug. Mm -hmm. And when you're a kid, cartoons, mm -hmm. Cartoon Network, 24 hour cartoons, mm -hmm. like I was, I got an education from that, from Nickelodeon, from, I learned about social settings when you're a kid from like Hey Arnold. Mm -hmm. And then 20 years later, I got to tell the creator of Hey Arnold, like, hey, I learned like, you know, to not stress out about certain stuff because of this one episode of Hey Arnold where he was thought to not be cool and he didn't get into invited to a party and then he went and had his own gathering and everybody just went to that one because it was like that very sitcom -y basic mm, thing. Right. I'm like, I did, I learned stuff from the show Friends. I'm mm -hmm. rewatching Friends right now and it's so relevant because could I'm 30. Could it be 30. more insightful? No, it could not. I'm 30 and the season that's happening again. right now is like, one of the characters, well, the two of the characters are getting married, Ch uh, Chandler and Monica, mm -hmm. and then they ask Joey to like to actually marry them, and that's what's happening to my two friends, and I'm being asked <gasps> later this year. I'm that's like, crazy. holy shit! I'm like, jo I'm like Joey Tribbiani. You're friends. So, so anyway, how you end, doing? Yes. <laughs> hey, how you doing? It's how you doing, not <laughs> how you okay? doing. It's how you doing. How you doing? How you doing? Okay. That's what it is. How Gum you doing? Gum would be perfection. Gum would be perfection. That's like what season one, that's season like, two. That's like I know like four friends references. <laughs> that's pretty good. Anyways. Any hoozle, the moment where I thought in the book, this has got to be Adora, other than the fact that we're spending the most time with her, mm -hmm. is when they, when, when Jillian, Gillian? Gillian. Gillian Flynn goes in great detail, Adora in her garden, and she had pliers. And I yeah. went, that's the weapon. It's the teeth. Didn't even, even though, realize that. I know. Even though, that, but I'm like, I'm like, mm, they could she could have said that she was just in the garden cutting Not roses secateurs. and stuff. What's that? Pliers over secateurs. Whatever. Yeah. What is, what, what did you say? Pliers? Secateurs? Secateurs? What Anyone? is that? Is that, that sounds like are a those, Pokemon. Are they like sharp scissors? What are you talking Big about? Scissors? No, they're secateurs. They're shark op, sharp objects? Secateurs? What word is that? I've never, <laughs> I've never heard, heard that heard in my that. life. Hey, chat! <laughs> Help me! Secateurs? Secateurs. Because it tears. Are for 
Like shearing. Yeah, cutting flowers. Mm. Oh, shearers. I'm imagining big. No, no shearers yeah. are like hedges. Sh- yeah. They're like that big. The Pru- what? Yes, thank you. Pruning they're pruning shears. shears. They're so they're secretaries. Also, <laughs> they're How much shears. more fun is it saying <laughs> it secretaries? It is. It is. It is. Three, secretaries. two, one. Secretaries? It's like, in, it's like how in Spanish there's a whole word for a traffic light that's new that is semáforo, mm-hmm. but in English it's just traffic light because it's it's like it, it's a light for traffic. But in yeah. Spanish they're yeah. like semáforo. Yeah. It's like a whole new word that yeah. is not like luz de tráfico. Like it's a whole new word. Yeah. Is that like a combination of red, orange, and green together? I don't think so. No, because it's it's rojo, like uh, roaring, Schadenfreude or whatever the yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, yeah, the German word the for, German word for like in, taking pleasure in the misery of others, <laughs> which is what I think about whenever the Patriots lose. Oh, I'm uh, no, I'm happy that I oh. enjoy seeing oh, the that pates, in pain. The yeah. Pats. yeah. Um, it's really so interesting in the yeah. chat right now. People were discussing what it was when they grew up, what the um, show was that taught them their moral compass, and it was mm-hmm. Saved by the Bell. Um, but you know, you, you would have cartoons where it's like, listen, kids, mm-hmm. don't yeah. do this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so it kind and knowing of, is half the battle, G.I. Mm-hmm. Joe. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. I learned my stuff, honestly, yes. from, from comic books. Arthur. Books. Oh, I learned Arthur was cute. to not. Oh, my gosh. Arthur. I have never kept the water on when brushing my teeth because of a cartoon that happened on Sesame Street. Mm-hmm. Oh, great. That I watched when I was about four. Yeah. And it was a guy, a little boy, and he's brushing his teeth and the, the tap's on and, and the, he lives and next the, to the, you know and it. The fish go, and the fish is In like, the <gasps> pond and it goes oh, down yeah. and he's like, they showed hello there, Sesame do you mind Street? not turning on yeah. the water when you're brushing oh, your teeth? Sh- yeah. And he does it. <laughs> he's only got that much water to live in for yeah. the rest of his life. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I have yeah. never. Stuff stays <laughs> with you. Stephen, <laughs> it just unlocked the memory in Stephen. Yeah. But I watched it, I was like, it is. That's Done. great. Uh, I Say was no in more. CCD, which is like Catholic Sunday school, but during the week. And it was Ooh, very awful. It's, it, What's it, it really was. I think catechism something something I don't know it, it stands for torture um, it stands for being told that like even if you go to church you still might not go to heaven <laughs> Catholicism it's whatever. a French word secretaire secretaire meaning she is um, well there we go there we go but and we, we also had, say Soviet instead of napkins Soviet? 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 No, that's Soviet Russia. Union? What are you talking Serviet. about? Serviet. Oh, Serviet. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get it. Oh, napkin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's weird. That's, that's interesting. Weird. Serviet also makes sense because you use it to serve. Yeah. No, but go but on. But anyway, in CCD, we had to watch this cartoon. We had to watch cartoons about all the virtues, so like... <laughs> Patience and wisdom. The Oof. patience one stuff. What are the virtues? Patience, even kindness, wisdom. I don't know. I don't Love clearly. I don't remember. The, it's just the things that were. On, it's just the things like lessons. Whoa. Like, like I only know the seven deadly sins because of seven the movie. That's true. And Damn I know, it, I'm hecked up. I know seven deadly sins because of Shazam the comic Beatitudes. book. Beatitudes. Uh, but also um, a lot uh, of stuff. The, uh, uh, I feel like the virtues are just the things. Virtues that they are just like like on the Wonder good, Woman posters yeah, for the movie yes, Wonder Woman. Wait, yeah. wait, Stephen, run through them again real quick. Wow, well, you patience, found God kindness, at a young age, huh? whatever. But we had to watch. No, you car- were served God. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We had to watch a cartoon about patience, and the boy in the cartoon was like, "I want to live my life. I want to go. I want to see. Yeah. What, like, I want to get my get going." Him. And this guy appears and gives him a ball of yarn, and right. he's like, "Okay, every time you pull this, you'll go further into the future." So the kid's like, okay, this is boring. I want to go in the future. So he like pulls a string, and then it's like five years in the future, and he's like five years old or whatever. Oh, this and is then just he like, like the movie Click. He like keeps go pulling. On. Yeah, this is why I didn't want to see Click because oh, I thought of this cartoon. Have you never cartoon. seen Click? No. You so if you mom's seen it, oh, it's so good. Icon. So he pulls yeah. all the way to the end, and like his wife is dead, and he's literally. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is a cartoon that I saw when I was like nine. No lie, and it was like the lesson is like be patient. Be patient. Jesus. So yeah, that's stuck in my brain. I don't know. But he can rewind though. She's not really learning a lesson, is he? This is you can't go. He, you no, can't no, no. Go he, back. Learned, he, he learned his lesson. You just pull it all me. the way. He learned his lesson. Ugh. You will learn patience after watching Click. I already learned patience from this stupid one, CCD video. One will teach video. you love. One will teach Ta- you patience. patience. One taught me pain. One taught you Are pain. you for real bringing up an Ariana Grande and lyric? Rachel isn't even here. Mm-hmm. That's yes, amazing. That's how I live my life. Uh huh. So guys, we learned anyway, that Adora. Here's the here's the crazy thing. We learned that Adora was trying to give Marion and Camille medicine. Adora has started to poison Ama. And Emma? Camille, Emma, and Camille realizes her mother killed Marion. You called you, it. You called it. No, you. Oh you yeah, can it. You we did. please address the yes. fact yes. Yes. that there's something that happened in the first half of the book where I saw that she was excited by the notion of caring. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I brought mm-hmm. up that instance of that girl that killed her mother, who yes. basically put her in a wheelchair. <sighs> mm-hmm. 
and yeah. you spent and then your I brought entire up the childhood. Sense, right? mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. right. Yep, that's that's my reference. And I was like, what's it called when you purposely make someone mm. sick so you can like either look after them? I don't know many Munchausens, but oh no, yes, there's a huge case in Australia. This girl pretended that she had cancer. Oh my god! And that she cured it um, using like eating nutritious foods. And she started like a charity organization and she kept all the money as well. Oh but my God. It was this whole thing where she established this nutritional um, routine. And then, of course, doctors came in and went, No. Bullshit. You yeah. can't cure cancer by With eating nutrition. an organic diet. Yeah. That's yeah. not how it works. Turned out she wasn't sick at all. Uh, she wow. was fined $600,000 and it was refused to pay. Wow. So I understand Munchausen's, but this one's Munha- uh, Munchausen's by proxy. Yeah. Where she was obvious and you know it's systemic and we can see that happening where all alan knows is all the shit that she had to deal with as a child and mm-hmm. he's very very precious with her because mm-hmm. it's like don't you don't just remember like this happened to your mother did you know that her mother used to come in and pinch her just to see that she wasn't dead in her sleep but you know Jeez. it was to hurt her yeah. and Camille's going she did that to me are you kidding yeah. yeah but it's this thing where it's like you know she had some sort of a relationship with her mother who made her punished her mm-hmm. and you know I don't really understand the driving her out to know where to walk home and what lesson that served yeah but she obviously held a lot of resentment with that Oof. yeah and so now feels that she can only control her children if she um, poisons them yeah mm-hmm. well it's interesting because I, I talked to, this is not kind of related but not specifically in regards to the book but I was talking to my therapist about you know, how my mom, my relationship with my mom and my mom's relationship with my nonna, which is yeah. like, my nonna was very hard on my mom, like yeah. loved her a lot, but like she had to do a ton of chores. All she was the only, like, right. Like it was, yeah, yeah, tough love. My nonna wouldn't say like, I love you to my mom that often, like blah, blah. And so my mom is very much like, I love you to me all the time yes. and is very yeah. like worried about me, blah, blah, blah. So it's just like interesting that like it's in reaction to. Yeah. She's so scared way. to have the same thing happen. Yeah, that exactly. She's overcompensating yep. somewhat. Mm-hmm. And then you have like the, and I'm not absolutely, and I'm in no way insinuating this is happening with you, but we have this um, effect of a lot of grandparents are doing tough love mm-hmm. and then this overcompensating happening. And you see, especially in this book, the coddling effect. Yes. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, I'm going to smother you, I'm going to coddle you, I'm going to make sure that you never scrape your knee, that you never get sick, that you never have to experience anything. Which can also be bad. Just as bad. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I'm, I'm experiencing it quite a lot with... Um, my work I work with I, I have contributors and they're a lot of the time are you know younger than 25 sure and they have been told their whole life that they can be anything that they want and yeah. they mm-hmm. deserve it all and mm-hmm. that they're good yeah. enough and so all of a sudden they're here going well I've been with you for four weeks why don't I have my dream job why aren't I working for like the top tier of everything sure and it's right. like, well because you have to to work towards it and then yeah. it's like yeah I'm kind of bored and I don't love this so I'm mm-hmm. just gonna quit because I should be further ahead mm-hmm. and you're like have fun like, with that. That's not yeah. how this Good works. Luck. I think about Please. that a lot. It's like, I mean, it's such a, I feel like of this time mm-hmm. kind of dilemma or kind of like thing that we've all heard. Like, yeah, we've all heard like, you can be whatever you want to be. You can do whatever you want to do. But like my stepdad is took over his business from his dad. Mm-hmm. Right. And like, but t- his son, my step bro- brother is not mm-hmm. going to take over because he wants to do something else. And it's just like, we have, or that's privilege too, is like, you have the yes. choice to not have to do that. Yeah. Yes. But I, I talked about this, with my mom, I'm like, what did you like want to be before I was born or whatever mm-hmm. and she was like well I was like kind of thinking about going to law school but then I kind of just wanted to be a mom and I was like what a game I, changer that's that insane been. like yeah. to yeah. have that is that yeah. which is cool like some people that's what they want to do and whatever but I'm like I don't want to do that and she's yeah. but yeah. that's she's totally like you need to get a job you need to do this what did you, what did you guys make of that conversation that happened I don't I can't remember if it was in this section or at the tail end of last week's section but when Camille goes and hangs out with the women of the town Jackie her her, her age friends. group and they talk about how like they disagree with feminists oh, God. because yeah. they just want to be moms and they just want to be like homemakers. And she was upset because she, she was she devastated had because mm-hmm. she couldn't have a third, a four, mm-hmm. like a third, a fourth yeah. kid. Like she, that she was like, my husband wants to stop. He said three is in, is too much or is enough. And I thought that that whole scene was fascinating because you heard things in retaliation like does he not care about you and your needs right Mm -hmm. right um i can't stand feminism feminism just means that women can have these radical ideas and actually fight for what Mm -hmm. they want Mm yeah and you're like Mm -hmm. um Uh (laughs) right um but it's that i guess it's that small town syndrome you know yeah Yeah. she has her purpose in being a mother 
Yeah. Yeah. She finds the puppets. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I just thought that that whole scene was really fascinating because I feel like those characters, and you know, people in real life as well, people who, it, it's such a difficult thing to talk about because I, I keep thinking of the word settle. Like you're you're settling for a life that maybe you didn't ideally plan for when you were younger or your dreams mm -hmm. that you couldn't achieve or whatever but at the same time to have a family is a wonderful thing and to have children is amazing and that's not settling and to like marry somebody or start a family with somebody I'll you give you another about, word for right? it it's, that'll yeah. help mm -hmm. you yeah. contentment yeah being mm -hmm. content absolutely and that's good too that's that's again talking about that person that miserable person you mentioned earlier who will never be satisfied there are hard-working people in your the most glamorous fields on earth mm -hmm. actors and musicians and mm -hmm. and athletes that will never be satisfied and, there, you know yeah. it's it's there's a documentary on netflix at the moment an american meme and it's like the more mm. success people find the more depressed they are mm -hmm. sure and you know sure. i think i don't know if it was Camille mentioning it in this book or where i heard i, I consume so much <laughs> Somewhere that else i can't differentiate yeah. Yeah. yeah but it was like I have gotten to a point, maybe it even was Carrie Fisher in a book that we could be reading. Oh, um, interesting. But it's funny because she was like, you know, I don't know any other normal. This is my normal and I happen to have two famous parents. Yes, yeah. that um, was Carrie Fisher, yeah. But uh, it's this thing where it's like you see, maybe it was Paris freaking Hilton from this documentary. Whatever it was. <laughs> she's in it, by the way. It's hilarious. It's amazing. Great. She's holding on. Um, but it's like you see families that have settled down and they have children and they go home to their family and they don't really go out much anymore, but they're so happy sure. with what they have. Mm -hmm. That's and great. here I am at the you know VIP and at clubs five nights a week and bottle service and I don't pay for anything and I sit here longing for that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I'm pretty sure that that family is like, I just want a night off. I just want to like have, put my yeah, hair up. The and, grass mm -hmm. is always greener. There was yeah. a Kanye West song about this. If I can go ahead and bring up Kanye West, oh, no. the idiot. He's so difficult to defend. <laughs> but he did have a song literally about how he would go to meet his friends and they would show him baby pictures. Yeah. And he was like, I got a new car. Like he would show yeah. them. And, 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 and talking about some of that profound sadness. But a lot know? of the time, yeah, the more success and like, you know, mm -hmm. the more you have to put towards whatever status you have, whether right. it's monetary or whatever, like that's what the depiction of happiness truly is. Yeah. It's having mm -hmm. your partner and your family. And that is like the wholesome, mm -hmm. purest way to have happiness. And having Camille, oh, have you settled down? Do you have kids? No. Yeah. And it's interesting, I think, in trip objects with Camille especially and for women. Emma. Especially both, for women. Yeah. Like it's, they're it's our purpose. Science yes, yes, says yes. we have to breed. We have to have children. That is our duty. That's the God combination of wills religion it. and science. Yeah, God you're wills here. it. But uh, Camille and Emma are clearly, although you know, Adora would take Camille out when she was younger, and she was very much in the town, and and Camille's popular too. Her and Emma do stand out in comparison to the other girls in town. Yeah, and I think it's interesting the ways that they try and break out of that because they. I don't, it's not that something's wrong with them. It's just they don't want that yeah. life. They mm -hmm. want more than that. Mm -hmm. And Camille escapes it in many ways. And Emma tries yeah. to escape it in many yeah. other ways, too. Mm -hmm. So it's just interesting them trying does to get she? rid of that conformity. How does mm -hmm. Emma? Because Emma feels like she's got the whole town wrapped around her little yeah. finger. And she figured it out. And yeah. she's the most persuasive person that she can convince her 34-year-old older sister uh -huh. to take to do narcotics. Drugs. And ecstasy in one go, and the kiss. I was like, "That's incestual." Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. so we don't have boundaries, but she's just going she's along bored. with it. Mm -hmm. Emma's bored with the town, I think, Cause, cause, and I think Emma it thinks that she because she has her up, and then she's I, above I think, it. Like, I think she adores the control she yeah. has over yes. every person, except the few that got Adora's attention more than she did. Mm -hmm. Or they got later Camille's or, attention more than she like, and I think I picked up on Camille some of that. took attention from yes. Emma because yeah. Camille was uh, yes. like, "Oh, back in town," mm -hmm. she, and you then know? she would see sister. yeah Richard being mm -hmm. affectionate towards her, and she's like, "What? Mm -hmm. You um, you have someone else distracting you right now?" Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I also I don't know if I was reading between the lines, but at the end when Camille took um, Ama to Chicago. It felt like it, 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 Ama could have, as a character, loved being in a new sort of a bigger pond, right? Like a, like a, a smaller fish in a bigger pond. But then even that ended horrifically, which ended in her being found out as like, oh shit, oh, you're the uh, one that did it. it uh, the the I the teeth in the, show, in the dollhouse, the teeth in the dolls. I I like gasped. Yeah. That no. realization, I was just like, yeah. I was like, Ugh. what a, what else more? Yeah. Come yeah. On. <laughs> How? 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 
how, and then the yeah. book tells you how, and you're like, Fuck. I wish I could have had a flash, <laughs> just like a 30 second sure. flashback. But it was in the, it was well, the mid credits scene. Well, you do you get out. to see it, but it's not, oh, I mean, okay. <laughs> you don't really see her like fully, you know, in the, you yeah. know. Because that was a really graphic moment in the show that didn't happen in the book was um, Richard getting the hot, the pig's head and actually oh, doing it yes. himself. That I felt mm. was. Look, look out for that. All right, looking forward to that. So, oh, guys, that yeah, was that a was lot brutal. for me. Yeah. We still have two weeks of December left. So we are starting another quick read wait, wait. next week. Oh, we, 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 we got to rate Sharp Objects. What do we think? Uh, Out of five, we're asking the poll right oof. now. Zero to five. How many stars would you give at Sharp Objects? I'm going to put it at 3.54, yeah. somewhere in there. I have to wait until I watch the show because just like Gone Girl, read the book, fantastic. Had mm -hmm. already seen the movie, fantastic. Mm -hmm. They're not something that I love, so I don't know if I'm going to keep it on my shelf, if you know what I mean. I have got a limited it. shelf space. Sure. Well, gotta, not, it's not a rereader. Sure, sure. It's, it it's a one and done. Not, but yeah. but, but to, I, to reread it, you will see some of those seeds planted. Yeah, I kind of want to rewatch the on. show now, knowing yeah. and seeing book. what you can kind of pick what up would, on. Because What would you rate the book? Uh, I'd say four. It, four. it is, I mean, I, it's so I, well done. I yeah. get sucked in by family stuff and by generational depictions of different, like, especially women. I'm like, yeah. I come from a family. I have a mom, sister, aunt, like all very female heavy family that cool. I'm like, I'm in for this. We're okay. moving. It's almost up to four. Mod, what will you give it? Uh, yeah, I think it's 3.75 to almost a four. I'm oh. like nudging towards a four. I think it's really well. Actually, yes. I'm going to say four. Four. Hard four. Solid yeah, four. four. It yeah, was, it's, solid it's, four. It's, solid right now four. it's moving between 3.6, 3.5 is where it was a second ago, but I feel like it's going to end on 3.6. That's your guys' rating. We still have two more weeks of December left. So we're starting another quick read next week. It's a bit lighter. And we're going to go back yes. to one of our favorite Let's authors. Let's again. So for some one lightness. Of, some one some of levity. our favorite authors <laughs> and people in general. Yeah. <laughs> we Zing. will be reading Carrie purpose, Fisher's really? autobiography. No, no, I did. I knew that was not on purpose <laughs> for you, but it's general, Leia. Yeah. Carrie Fisher's autobiography, me, Wishful Drinking. Your homework is to read up to chapter five. Is, is to read up until chapter half five. The book. That's your homework. Half the book. It's a quick, yep. it's a quick half one. Half the book. Up, and you know what? It's a, lo drinking. it's a lot of photos. It's big text. Yeah. So you can smash you can it. Hear I read it, I read it in this. three hours. I've already read it, guys. Look at this. Look, I read at, it the, look at how big hours. the words are. You're good. Yeah. So yeah. guys, don't forget, we're also on Goodreads. Search Alpha Book Club and come discuss with us. Make sure that you send us your book recommendations to at Nerdist, at Geek and Sundry, or at Joint Team Alpha with the hashtag Alpha Book Club. What do you see in my creating claw? I'm basically a book herder. I don't give up any book. There's always room on the shelf, and if there isn't, buy a new shelf. <laughs> I do. I do. Hard agree. But for comic books, <laughs> <laughs> I have so much shit, you guys. <laughs> I'm a hoarder too. I have a problem. I have a problem. So, th guys, thank you so much for joining us. You're the best. We're gonna see you next week. Carrie Fisher, Wishful Drinking, up to chapter five, and have a great week. Goodbye. Bye. Wow. <laughs>